on the couch and his previous Obama and Bush on the couch books. Justin Frank MD is his Twitter handle, which is uh, one of the places where he's most active and really worth checking out. He's really worth following on Twitter. Dr. Frank, welcome back to the program. I, uh, you and I were talking on Twitter a day or three ago and you made this comment, certainty is a defense against anxiety caused by cognitive dissonance. Can, can, uh, we're asking the question, how do we stop Trump death cultists from drinking the Kool-Aid, essentially? Um, these are, this is all the same thing, right? Can you, can you translate that into English? Yes, uh, I think you just did translate it in part. Uh, the idea of a death cult is really important, but I want to just emphasize the word cult because it's a very strict uh, set of beliefs and feelings where people are attached to an authoritarian figure. They believe everything that person says. They follow him or her, usually him. And they are very suspicious of anybody who disagrees with them. And yet they need to have a kind of other, somebody who they can disagree with and think is wrong and bad. And this is a way of getting rid of what's called cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance means having two conflicting thoughts or feelings, both of which may be true, but they don't fit together. So you have a very hard time uh, making a decision or knowing what to do. And cognitive dissonance for most people, all of us, can cause some anxiety. I don't know who to believe. I don't know what to believe. I don't know how to act. I mean, this is a very familiar kind of situation. But the power of the Kool-Aid and Trump is that he gets away with abolishing cognitive dissonance. We have certainty. There's no anxiety. And I think that's the core uh, quality and uh, attraction of cognitive dissonance, of, of a cult uh, group. And one of the things you see this in, for instance, is in certain evangelical churches. Uh, I have a friend who was in an evangelical church uh, years ago when she was a little girl or a young girl, young woman, and she told me that the pastor ran off with a 14-year-old girl in their uh, church. Not good. And was obviously not allowed to come back, and it was not good. But you would think that uh, they would rethink things, but it turns out that when the next pastor came to be there, he had the same power over them as the previous pastor. And so it wasn't about belief systems as a system. It wasn't about religion or Jesus or anything like that. It was actually about the person who was the leader. It was about the pastor. So it's about Trump now, but the, uh, you were talking earlier about uh, the life after Trump and what are we going to do? Well, I think that somebody can step into Trump's shoes very quickly because there are people who are more hungry or certainty, who are afraid of doubt, who really can be anti-vaxxers even though they see friends and family dying who are anti-vaxxers. So it, it, it sounds to me like it's what you're saying. very frightening. Yeah, I, I agree. It sounds to me like what you're saying is that there is a certain subset of our population that experiences so much anxiety by not knowing what's true and what's not true, what's real and what's not real that they are looking for somebody to tell them what's true and not true. And whether that person is telling them the truth or not doesn't matter. What matters is that they bond to that person. These are your cult followers. And in the case of this church, that pastor had apparently, you know, been a cult leader long enough that the people who are not inclined to be cult followers left the church and the church was left with nothing but people who are cult follower types. So when another cult leader exactly. replaces the original pastor, the people just transfer that right to him. And it sounds like what you're saying is that's also true of the Trump followers and of the anti-vaxxers and, you know, people who in other circumstances would be, you know, believing that the UFOs are going to come and save us all or whatever, that they're yeah. always going to be looking for a cult leader to, to teach them.
What does this tell us about how we can reach these people? I mean, is it possible that, I, you know, my dad, who hated Franklin Roosevelt, because my dad was a, a staunch Republican, um, oh, he didn't hate him, he disliked him, um, used to refer to, the, to the, the people who were really into Roosevelt as cult followers. I mean, is it possible to give these folks certainty in something that actually is true? You know, hey, you know, we're actually doing something here good. You should be following Joe Biden instead of Donald Trump. You know, is it possible to, to even take cult followers and get them to follow the, the cult of the normal? Well, it is possible, and there are people who certainly followed Roosevelt, and he won by landslides every time he ran. And I can see where your father didn't like that, especially if he was a Republican. But I think that one of the things that's different to me about Roosevelt, I, mean, I remember I had a very big argument. This is really important, Tom. I remember after Clinton was inaugurated in 93, I was with a group of friends, and I was talking about how angry I was at Clinton about something or other, who I can't remember. And this woman, who was a very dear friend of mine forever, said, don't say anything bad about Clinton. It's not fair. And I said, I want to have a leader that I can get angry at, that I can be disappointed in, that I can question. I, that's a person who allows you to think and who will think also. That's how I felt about Clinton, where I didn't feel that way about Reagan or H.W. Bush, because they didn't allow for other people to think. Hmm. So I think that, that, that so that's that very different. And Roosevelt was not like that either. Roosevelt tolerated people criticizing him and talked about it. You're right. You're, you're absolutely, and, and, absolutely right. And Trump does not. Yeah, it's it. yeah, it, 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 and it's a fascinating thing. So, what does that tell us about if we have uh, about how to deal with a friend or a next door neighbor or a uh, a relative or somebody in the workplace who has bought into you know who's uh, Sean was telling me about somebody she knows who's trying to cook hydroxychloroquine in their in their kitchen, right? They got some recipe off the internet right. to make drugs that's going to save them from COVID because they don't want to get vaccinated. How do we approach these people who have fallen into this cult because of this psychological vulnerability? Okay, I think one of the issues that is really important is your use of the term fallen into the cult. I actually think they embrace the cult. Mm -hmm. I don't think they fall into it. I think they're looking for something that will relieve their anxiety and they're looking for answers. So they don't actually, they may look like they fall into a cult, but I think that they embrace it. And I think it's an active process. And it's a process, uh, even though they're passively following the leader, the search for a cult is very active and very affirming. And when they connect to a leader, they really connect deeply. So the question is, how do you help a person disconnect? Well, first of all, I don't know, I have to say, because it's really hard to do unless they have an inner conflict about the uh, hydrochloroquine that their recipe that they're following, or if they see that I love this recipe, but it's also killing my boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, then I, they may think about it. But you need to get cognitive dissonance in people in a cult. They have to learn to find some way of doubting their uh, dutiful following. And that's a very hard thing to do because people use certainty as a defense against anxiety about having to think. Right. And all of us have anxiety, have, are attracted uh, maybe except for you and me, are always attracted to the pleasure of not having to think. Like we could just categorize, all Trump is bad, Trump is, you know, we just put people in categories and we yeah. do that. Oh, I think we're all vulnerable to that. It's, from having to think. It's, a, it's, yeah. a, uh, it, it's also a mechanism to deal with the overwhelming number of things to think about. You know, Okay, that category yes, of stuff, I'm just going to accept that. Yeah. That's right. In fact, I had a friend who used to say he has 
every five years he develops a new uh, concern that he will not think about. So like in the 50s, he said, I'm not thinking about China for five years or I'm not thinking about <laughs> the environment for five years. And he didn't read about any of those things in the paper. And he focused on whatever he was focusing on. That was, that was pretty funny. But you can't do that now with climate change, with the democracy falling apart, possibly, with uh, lots of things happening, the people now being allowed to vote. My yeah. goodness. And a pandemic on top of it all, this, and which a just pandemic. exacerbates oh, yeah. so, everything. Yeah. So any, we have, we have one really... minute before we're going to hit a hard break that I can't stop. Um, any suggestions on, on how we move for, out, of this, uh, out of this world of the, my, the Trump cult? first suggestion, well, there's a few. First suggestion is listening is the new talking. Listen to the person who doesn't agree with you and try to understand where they're coming from because you'll learn a lot about them and about you and what it is that they're afraid of. Secondly, find a way to pose questions rather than be an expert to by saying that they're wrong or they don't know it. It's always important to be shall we say, dumber than the other person. Hmm. And that's something that Tucker Carlson is great at when he says, well, how does this work? And he makes mm -hmm. you doubt something. He doesn't just attack it. And that's a very important thing. You want to ally yourself with their own fears and finding a way to psychologically sit next to the person. Remarkable stuff. It won't always work, but it's the best way to do it. Yeah. Dr. Justin Frank, uh, author of Trump on the Couch. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter at JustinFrankMD. Dr. Frank, uh, and also the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at George Washington University. Dr. Frank, thank you so much for dropping by today.